Hello everyone, good morning. Lord Master of Sotek here with uh, Great Book of Grudges, or Ryan and Nathan, however you prefer to have it uh, announced. Back with another episode of Lore Beards. Just a brief heads up before we get into the meat of this week's episode, that um, it's going to be a little bit shorter than usual, but there is a reason for it. Uh, which we will talk about at the end of the episode, so stay tuned for more information uh, that comes out um, then. I hope you're all doing well. Nathan, how are you doing this week? Good, good. Uh, just a quick note to everyone. Uh, fortunately, no webcam on my behalf. Uh, the cat ate it. <laughs> but other than that... Uh, pretty good. Been painting a lot. We'll be showcasing those when we do the whole uh, Tale of Two Gamers thing. So, uh, yeah, pretty good. Just painting a lot lately. I'm actually really getting into a, um, into a really good, like, frame. Like, I'm actually getting stuff done. I'm surprised. That's great. I have I have one unit done. My, my chain rests are not quite finished yet, but I do have a full unit that I'm really excited to show off. Um, but I'm glad that you're feeling in a groove. Yeah, it's it's weird. Normally, like I look at a, a bunch of minis, I'm like, ah, I'll do it tomorrow. But like, I've been, I've been getting a lot done. I've been getting a lot done. I'm, I'm actually really, really happy because I've built up a lot of stuff. I've just primed a lot of stuff. I got locked out of the house because of it. Yeah, so <laughs> it's been a weird day. <laughs> so wait, wait, have you been locked out of the house and you nearly electrocuted yourself in the same day? Yeah, it's 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 not been a good day for me. Delightful. <laughs> <laughs> Delightful. Let's see if we can't turn around some of that luck. Um uh yeah, um well that's good. Uh things over here have been going well, been doing a lot of uh Witcher gameplay and uh um been spending a lot of time getting all those uh uploaded and rendered because I throw them up on YouTube as well uh, because I have a secondary channel, quick shameless plug for myself at Game Master of Sotech where I upload non-Warhammer related stuff I've been doing. So I've been trying to keep up with my streams and I think we're at, man, I think we're at like episode 130 now or something like that. Nice. Of The Witcher, but super fun game. So mm -hmm. I've been having a good time with it. But uh, I need I have quite a few tournaments coming up because I've got my Age of Sigmar monthly tournament coming up. I think it's in two weeks, and then I think the week or I think the week after that I leave for Scotland to do the Chaos Rising stuff, and then after I get back, I think I have another week or two before I have my local tournament again, and then after that I have to go to Austin. For the uh, the big tournament, the GT, nice. So, um, super super duper 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 exciting stuff, um, but also exhausting stuff, <laughs> depending on how you look at it. But uh, with that, I think we're ready to um, go into showing off all the models this week for uh, Tale of Two Gamers. Nice. So, um, if anybody wants to follow along. You can hop on the Twitters, where we'll be pulling these up. So first, our first entry that we're going to be looking at is Nathan's, <laughs> which are, oh. is, is his Warriors of Chaos, because the way my Twitter is pulling up the Lorebeards hashtag, this is just the first one. So t tell us about your warriors a little bit. I, I you, you got these sweet golden boys. Yeah, so uh, 15 warriors of Sunesh, uh, standard down shields. The Obviously, the helmets and the banner are actually from the Hellstrider kit. I wanted them to, to look a bit more regimental, and I don't like the look of the chaos shields. And let's be honest, the chaos helmets are... They're not really... They don't fit with a the Sunesh theme, whereas here it looks like a legion, doesn't it? Yeah, they look. They, I was gonna say the the helmets in particular look really good on these models. Um, yeah, I, I, hadn't, I hadn't even noticed it was a kit bash until you specifically said it. <laughs> like uh, it, it was something that I've always wanted to do, just to have a bit of a, a different theme. And the idea is to finish this. Well, this group is done. Uh, the basing just needs work, but then again, my shop at the moment. 
is having trouble bringing in stock. So getting anything into Jib is becoming a bit of a hassle. But for now, it's it's got the basic for battle ready, you know? Um, and I want to do about four more regiments of this. So I can have 15, because it's 15 total. And I want to have uh, four squads of 15, because you never know when you're going to need to use a big amount. The only problem Fair is I'm, think I'm thinking about the whole sanding down another group of shields, and that was that was exhausting. That just killed me inside. Uh, but it's a, it's a fun conversion, I think. The gold really fits. Uh, I was inspired by a... Because uh, I searched Warriors of Chaos, uh, Sunesh, on Google. And they had something where they custom-made something, like a shield and stuff like that. But I'm not really tech-savvy with like a 3D printer and so on. So I was like, screw it, I'll just sand down the shields. It makes them look more regimental. It's more Talian, in a sense, with a look. It which does look I... The shields did turn out very nice. Hmm. It took a while, and I mostly cut myself a few times with it, but I... <laughs> what, are you, I what are you using to sand? Uh, I had to use a hobby knife to, to cut off some oh stuff because... Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, it, it was ridiculous, because um, it's another thing with the stock issue with the local shop, so uh, my, my pliers uh, broke, so I was like, well, screw it, I'll use a knife. I was determined to get these done, and I'm quite happy with how they look, because they're really gold, they're really there, it goes with a look from i think it was like third or fourth edition for um sunesh so i was quite keen on that the banner itself is pretty i couldn't get the other stuff to hang on though because it's just it just wouldn't hold but with how it looks i'm, I'm, I'm actually quite content well they did turn out nice i'm gonna send you i'm gonna send you a link for uh for the you i'm assuming you don't have the shaving uh um piece that games workshop sells it's like a it's like a dull knife like you can't cut yourself on it but it's super good for shaving minis i have one somewhere the problem is obviously uh because obviously i I just done the move to, to get oh, the room yeah, yeah. done. so finding anything at the moment is next to impossible <laughs> well, well quit <laughs> quit trying to destroy yourself it seems to be like a theme for this yeah week. it's <laughs> it's just it's just me at the moment um, all right, so moving on to the next piece is my entry. Uh, so I took a picture of these guys in my display case, but this is my full unit, and, um, currently my favorite painted unit of, uh, Glaive Stalkers. So these guys are, uh, I don't have the opportunity to take them much on the table right now, but I imagine, they're, you know, you never know when rules might get updated or changed, and suddenly they'll become more viable. But this is one of the uh, first units um, that was available for the Nine Hot through the starter kit, plus another um, um, addition. But I'm really happy how these guys turned out. Uh, I, I was testing quite a few techniques on them. Um, so there are some little changes, but the drummer guy in particular turned out stupid good. Um, the pictures I took don't really get a good angle of them. But the thing I really liked about these models is some of them come with a pre-done base, which you can tell because they're the ones that have like the bricks and leaves and roses and stuff on their base. They don't have the they don't have the the scrag grass <laughs> that some of the, that uh, most of my minis do. But um, I actually found myself pretty fond of those pre-done bases because it I, it just made life easy. <laughs> I didn't have to worry about basing them. Um, but of course, that's not standard for most minis. Um, Oh, you can type, uh, if you use the second tab, oh, the one in checks. What is it? The, it? Under advanced search? On top of the hashtag? Oh, yeah, you're right. Latest. Ah! <laughs> Thank you, chat. Next, uh, we've got a piece here from Rowan the Accused. And what, what are a unit of samurai. Yeah, he plays uh, Warhammer Armies Project. He's actually one of my mods. Uh, and he's got some uh, samurai. These, I think, are ranks of nine. Two ranks of nine. Or am yeah, I... they look absolutely delightful. Mm. Yeah. Uh, wow, those look super, super good. Did he freehand the banners? I think so. Actually, Rowan's in my chat, so maybe he can uh, just uh, say if he did or not. But I believe these are all free. Uh, yeah, yeah, these are all three D printed too. Like he, he puts a lot Damn. of effort in his army. 
they look really good and the bases also turned out absolutely like snow bases i have found are really really tricky um to pull off to make it look like I mean, just to make it look good but the fact that they, they they look like they're standing on like an icy lake or something mm. with the snow scattered around their feet it looks really good he should be super proud of this oh he got these from um, warlord games apparently oh very nice they, they turned cool out rain. they turned out absolutely marvelous yeah really, no, really nice looking unit. all right and then there's that all right then we've got tactical sign a member of uh my chat who i know is already here today uh posting his open karn watcher uh the open watch which are uh very similar to the uh the new skeleton minis that you can get as part of the soul black grave lords and they look i i love this kit like I love these skeletons. They're so much more interesting and dynamic than the old ones. Um especially the I like how there's only one skeleton that wears a mask <laughs> because he's the only one that hasn't lost his. Everyone else has lost their mask apparently. <laughs> and so like he's like the one guy. <laughs> Grant, I think that's the unit champion, but it's like everyone else in the unit <laughs> is not fully uh in full gear anymore. But um yeah, they turned out really good. Uh, man, you, uh, you got a really nice look on the silver, uh, metallics, metallics can be very difficult to apply and also maintain the, um, like the details beneath. Yeah. And the other thing I've noticed that he did a really good job at is, man, he did not, at least from what I could see, uh, I do not see any or, yeah, I don't see any like incidents where paint has accidentally ended like where the there's transitions between the body parts there's like no overlapping paint despite the fact these pictures being super up close yeah. <laughs> which is really impressive because if you looked at my minis this close <laughs> you would <laughs> you would see some uh you'd see some stuff all right next up hawk oddly who i just saw show up uh in chat here over here on twitch posted a unit of storm vermin Nice. Which I, I'm actually, uh, man, it's been a while since I've looked at the Storm Vermin kit. They, they're actually uh, uh, pretty good looking for how old they are. Oh yeah, yeah, they, they aged very, very well. Like their armor looks really good. The only thing about their kit I would say that hasn't aged super well is that their halberds are kind of bulky. Mm. But like that's you know for Skaven that's honestly not a necessarily a bad thing. But mm. uh, yeah, these have turned out. Uh, you're doing great, dude. Looks like you're getting some really good mileage and. Uh, Getting some really good painting done. The freehand on the banner turned out really nicely. Mm -hmm. And I like your I like the color scheme you went with too. Purple, purple, yeah. green, and silver is a very, very nice mix. Mm -hmm. Now the Skaven do need new models. I'm not I'm not changing my opinion on that. <laughs> that's that's not changing anything. Oh no, no, definitely. I mean I've got like I think about four hundred Storm Bubbin. Like yeah, they, they need a fix up, especially because they're a bit of a bastard to rank sometimes. And then I think our last entry uh, for this week, because we did show off quite a few entries from last week. So if you're sitting here going like, where's my entry or um, why is there so few? Then uh, you, you, you want to check out last week's uh, episode, um, which you can find, of course, on either of our YouTube channels. But our last entry here is from uh, Florian um, Naratio, um, Naratio, which is his Trogoths. His rot gut trogoths for his, and also his river trogoths for his uh, troll army, which we've seen um, some other models from his army, but he's got like really colorful trolls, like mm. they they are they are uh, he's got like rainbow trolls. Um, <laughs> they're looking really good. Um, actually, I think the thing I like the most on these models is their weapons. I don't know what exactly he did for the weapons, but they turned out. They turned out super, super nice. The they're not they're not jade, but that kind of like greenish stone. I almost wonder mm -hmm. if he used uh, contrast for that. I forgot the entries in the Discord. Oh, okay. Well, I will go grab those, um, and show them off real quick. But yeah, those turned out super duper nice. Should be very very proud of those. I think I had one in the Discord myself, so I'm gonna find out. And to those viewing, yes, we've got Ratfin as the background image today, so I do apologize. You don't need to apologize. They should be happy with what they get. 
Well, well, they're still getting me. It's actually fan art of me as a um, as a Skaven. <laughs> yeah, that's even better. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna grab all these. I'm gonna grab these pictures and open them as a link, and then I will post them in the Discord so we can still go through them on both streams. Oh, that'll be the. Okay, I think it's just. Oh nope nope. There's a couple more. I've got one myself. Just. Hey, shit. Nope. Uh, uh, one. I've got one in the Discord. Uh, okay. If it decides to freaking open today, it's just not my day. <laughs> You're all right, dude. <laughs> this one. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna start posting the, the chat. Then once I've got them all posted, you've got yours posted. Go through. Okay, yeah, you've got some stuff. Uh, it's just the one. Okay, just gonna throw stuff in chat, and then we'll just go down the list. Hope everyone had a good week. Uh, everyone's. Hanging in there. Oh, that's fucking great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Almost there. <laughs> Three more pictures. Okay. I think that one's actually a work in progress, but it's, it's nice looking. Okay. So I will just add this guy to the list I have. We'll put him in the order that we've got. Okay. So starting from the top. We've got, uh, is got, it the Bloodstoker first? Uh, no, it's a vampire on horseback first. Oh, uh, Isabella's model? Yes. It looks like Isabella's model. Hmm. Um, or, well, I know I don't, maybe it's Isabella. I don't think Isabella had a horseback model. Uh, but this is a vampire by Davy Jones. Very nice. Good old square cavalry base. I don't, I don't know which model kit this is. This is Isabella, isn't it? Um, no, Isabella had a different hairstyle. I'm wondering, I don't know what, it, it's definitely a vampire model based on the armor that she's wearing, but I don't know what kit it is. Really weird. Yeah, but it looks, it's, uh, you're doing a good job with it, dude. Keep working at it. Uh, next, we've got the Blood Secrator uh, by a member in your community. Mm -hmm. That's quite nice. I like uh, it. It, does it have a, that's a that's a um, the base itself is customized because I'm not too sure the ca character actually looks up like that, does it? Uh, no, not normally. Uh, he definitely uh did something to get the 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 positioning so he's more at a elevated angle. Mm, quite like that. Next up, we've Very got weird. we've got a fairy. Uh, he says an Albion fairy, also by Davy Jones. Cute little mini. Mm. Albion Fairy. Or you could, it does look good. I don't know what um I'm not sure what model range this is from, but I like the wing design. It's, mm. it's it's definitely uh we you know we don't actually have good playable fairies in uh Warhammer. Like you have spites as a part of like Wood Elf design, but they don't really have like Model well, I get yeah that they, they show up on the Wood Elf models they're like little dudes. Mm. All right, next up, Tybalane sent in a unit of Sisters of Battle. These are nice. We got a couple angles on them. These turned out really really well. They I, I love look sisters. Really good. Yeah, they have, they have a really nice design. Um, yeah, the, the sisters look really really good. So this is a really good looking unit and also I think he's giving us a nice tutorial on the best way to take pictures of models which is probably just to get like a white 
I mean, this looks like it's just a white piece of paper bent, and then you just take a picture with a light source, and it actually looks really nice. <laughs> so maybe I'll try and do this for next time. These are the new cars, aren't they? Yeah, these are the plastic yeah, ones. Yeah, these definitely look new. Mm, uh, so cool. Next up, uh, we've got some... Uh, Night in Flames. It's got a unit of Zongors. These um, are really cool. Which these look really, really nice. Uh, I don't think I've ever seen Zongors up close before. <laughs> um, I haven't played anybody that uses them. Um... And uh, I love that the unit champion's got, like, the Gal Roch thing going on, where he's got, like, another head ripping out of his first one. That's made, uh, made all muscly and it's got extra eyes and stuff. He's gone for, a, like, a, a pretty realistic approach, because normally they're quite blue-skinned. These, these are really, really cool. Like, uh, that, that's a kit bash, isn't it, for the banner? Is it? Uh, let's see. He, he's in chat. Um... um Knight, if these are, um, are, are these purely as they are out of the kit, or did you, did you do some kit bashing for this? That's a great banner. Yeah, it is. That's a really badass banner. Like, not only does it look good, but it's got a perfect, uh, perfect shank to impale it in someone. <laughs> mm. Um, are those Zongors? Yes, these are Zongors from Age of Sigmar, I think. Yeah, he said there's no kit bashing. This is just the oh, kit. Wow. Oh, wow, that's a great kit. <laughs> that is a great kit. That is a fantastic looking banner. Damn. Yeah. Um, I know it's not going to happen, but I do really wish we would get these guys in Total War. They're just oh, yeah. spectacular. I, I hope whatever we do get looks good, but I mean, these guys are just fantastic. I got a little worried, though, because uh, have you seen the uh, the newest? Uh, do you know that mobile game, uh, Chaos Conquest, which is still focused on Warhammer Fantasy? Uh, yes, but let's save that for after Tale of Two Gamers. We're almost there. Yeah. All right, and then um, near the end here, uh, we've got a picture of uh, some Blood Knights. I think this mm. is uh, also by Davy Jones. Um, these are the old school metal ones, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, these, these are definitely the... Yeah, these are super old school, actually. So these aren't even the older resin ones. These are the ones even before that. Uh, so... Some lovely major classic minis going on here. Uh, so good for you having these still available to play. If you ever get robbed, you can chuck them at... Or if someone ever tries to stick you up, you can chuck them at the person doing it and stun them with a blow to the head. <laughs> with these heavy-ass models. And, lastly, and then last, we've got a work-in-progress troglodon, which is mm -hmm. turning out super-duper nicely. Coming along well. Looks like... Um, maybe these are um contrast. I can't. I haven't gotten to the point where I can tell if it's contrast or regular yet. I think it's really thin down contrast because I've been using a lot of contrast lately. Um, it's just making things so much freaking easier. But I think so, yeah, because that looks like uh athematic blue on the scales. Yeah. All right. So thank you everyone for submitting your units over last week and this week. We actually had a ton of entries. So thank you all very, 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 very much. We really appreciate it. Um, Nathan, what should be the theme for next time? Right, so we've done, we've done a character. We've okay. done battle line. Yep. Uh, how about we go for something... Uh, so obviously in Warhammer Fantasy we used to say something on a on a monster base. So anything above a forty millimeter base, it can okay. be a single unit, it can be a, a squad or whatever, but it has to be a monster theme. Okay, so um, it'll once again it'll be two weeks. So it's not due next week. It's due the week after next week. Um, we are doing monsters. So bust out your monsters or anything monstrous. So it could be a big monster, or it could be like a unit of monstrous infantry, you know, monstrous cavalry. Or if your army, for whatever reason, doesn't have that, you know, you can always submit whatever. But uh, the theme for next week will be monsters. So uh, hopefully uh, people will join in on that. I actually think I know exactly what mini I'm going to do for it because I've been thinking about painting it. But mm. I'll, I'll, let that, I'll let that be a secret. Do Mornfangs count? Yes, Mornfangs would count. Those are monstrous. Yeah. Um, I'm thinking either my Demon Prince of Sinesh or maybe my Chaos Spawn, which I'm using the um, Slangors from Age of Sigmar because they just look so pretty. 
Oh, well, if we're revealing what we're going to do, uh, I'm going to do, I think I'm going to do my Morn Goal. Mm. Uh, I've got a, I've, yeah, I've got a big old fat uh, Morn Goal of, uh, for my Night Haunt, which I don't think his rules are very good right now, but he's, he's, he's definitely playable. I just don't think he's optimal. I've seen that um, recently. I saw uh, Mengel Miniatures. He he posted. He's got three in his army at the moment. I think I may have seen those on the Night Hunt uh, Discord, uh, Night Hunt Community Discord. Someone's been three D printing and messing around with the uh, um, Total War Warhammer designs. Nice. Uh, and to anyone that is listening or um, wants to join in on Tale of Two Gamers for the first time. Uh, it's very simple. The uh, easiest way to submit. Uh, the preferred way is to get on Twitter and type in hashtag lorebeards and then whatever you want after that and then attach the images to that tweet and that'll make it super easy for us to find it in two weeks time. Or if you want and you if you just don't have a Twitter account, you can always go to our individual discords. I'm going to be opening up a new channel after today, um, or after the live stream today, that's going to be specifically for Lord, uh, Tale of Two Gamer entries. Uh, if you're yeah. uh, wanting to do that, just to make it easier. The best thing you can do if you're in my Discord is just let me know on the day, because uh, believe me, you have no idea what I've had to deal with like 10 minutes before actually coming onto this <laughs> stream. <laughs> Everything was on fire! and <laughs> Almost, uh, almost! <laughs> All right, so real quick, before we go into the next thing actually on the schedule, what, what were you talking about earlier with the, oh, yeah. the mobile game? So obviously they're still rooted in Warhammer Fantasy. Uh, I'm going to send you the pictures. And what happened is that they released some art regarding Slangors, Porngors, Pestigors, and uh, what were the Zinchkwans called? Uh, Zongors. Zongors. And it is Warhammer Fantasy, so we're going to get that and then we're going to put them on screen. Oh, those are interesting. Uh, I don't like the, um, I don't like the fucking slam go. It's ugly. <laughs> well, the good news is we already know they're not using these because um, we, we have the, the Cornator in uh, Total War, mm. which these guys are clearly using an actual corn gore. I think it's probably that they're going to try... Um, I've got it on screen now, guys. Um, that's the Slangor. This is the Zangor. Uh, this is the Corngor. And this is the Pestigor. I actually like so, the Pestigor a lot. The Pestigor looks oh, yeah. great. It, it looks just like the original model. You remember those old Pestigors? Uh, you mean the, the old kit bashes from the White Dwarf? No, no, the old uh, legitimate models. I don't, I don't even remember there being a playable... Or a purchasable Pestigor. Yeah, uh, they made them uh, made to order recently too. Well, like last year. But um, they, they look great. I, I've actually, I ended up buying, I had a few kits. Uh, and then when they made it made for order, I bought like a few more kits because uh, they were just really stylized. The, um, there were two generations for the named Gores. Uh, the first generation had everyone. And then the second generation, for some reason, only had... Corn goes and pesta goes. Well, I think that we'll eventually get this as like a, a DLC or something. Maybe. I mean, I don't, I don't think they're bad designs, to be honest. The Slango is just ugly as shit, man. <laughs> I mean, he's not, I wouldn't say he's pretty by any means, but I mean, he does, he does give off Slaneshi vibes to me. So it's just... The, the, ve <laughs> the veil feels like overkill. But... Yeah, that, that's literally... That's what worried me. Like, everything else is fine, but why put a fucking veil over a goat, you know? Because <laughs> they're getting married. That's why. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the overall design is cool. Like, you can see, like, the shoulder pad is nice, and they've got the breastplate there. Everything is really, really cool. But it's just, it, it's, it's way too much. Yeah. I don't like the, uh, the, the Zangor. The, the Zangor, it's... yeah, the Zangor I also felt was really, really tame. Um, mm -hmm. Like he has some interesting fur patterns, but it's way too subdued. Like if I'm yeah. if I'm gonna have zongors on the table, I want everything to be crazy and wild. Yeah, beaks and all. That yeah, stuff. I need. Yeah, that's the thing is I want like if you're if you're like the the pestigor looks like it's actually mutated. The other three mm -hmm. don't look mutated. They just look like they're regular gores that are. They look like they're gores that are wearing 
equipment saying I serve this god, but that's boring. It should be they should be heavily mutated. Yeah, no, definitely. I mean, uh, I'll try find some of my pesticles so I can send you pictures because they they are gorgeous models. They were originally, yeah, I think all both iterations of them were metal. Though I think the first round of all of them, which wouldn't look like these models, were lead. So yeah, it was a long, long, long time ago. Oh, the good old lead minis. Aye. All right. Um. So next up uh, on the docket, uh, and this we're not going to talk a super long time about because I'm sure we've both talked it to death on our individual channels, is the, the Cathay roster reveal. So, uh, of course, for anyone that's been living under a rock, um, <laughs> Cathay's uh, official roster for the start of Total War Warhammer 3 has been revealed um, in all of its uh, uh, glory. So, Nathan, what are, what are your, what, how do you feel about it a few days after the announcement? So, uh, the roster itself is quite big. Uh, personal thoughts, which I got flamed from, uh, flamed for in my video, is I just don't like the helmets too much. Though I did love the Lord Magistrate's one. That one looked fucking cool. Um, <laughs> you got flamed. <laughs> there, yeah. were, there, were, there were riots in the comment section. <laughs> yeah, it was literally like, it's like, oh yeah, the, the roster looks really cool, but I don't like this helmet. I don't like that helmet. I don't like that helmet. And this guy, this comment was basically like, are you just going to bitch about helmets? It's like, well, it's just the characters, like the units themselves have nice helmets. It's just some uh, of them look I, a bit too oh, oh, I'm sorry. I I thought you uh, I thought you came for my opinion, which is why you're watching this video. <laughs> I didn't realize that we were here for your opinion. <laughs> I, I was telling everyone, it's like, look, we're all gonna have like uh, differences of opinions when it comes to uh, the units and stuff like that. Like I said, like the uh, what was it? Uh, let me just scroll down here. The uh... I really like the look of the, uh, God, I'm losing it. The Celestial Dragon Guard. Like, they look fucking awesome, and I'm going to enjoy painting them if they ever come out as minis. Oh, yeah. There, well, there's no way Games Workshop is not putting these all in as minis. There's no yeah. way. Like, considering, considering they're like, hey, you have to stamp Warhammer Community on any of these pictures. <laughs> yeah. It's so cool. Like, uh, the look themselves is really nice. The Astromancer looks like a diplomat in a sense. Uh, like... You can tell a lot of love has been put into the into the roster reveal. Uh, one thing I was really curious about, and maybe maybe you can answer this for me because I'm I'm really blanked out. Why does Zhao Ming look like he's joined the black metal band? Because I don't know. Maybe because he works in a forge a lot, so he's got like like his fingers are really darkened. So yeah. I'm wondering if he had like, I mean, that could just be like his dragon claws or something. But I would, I would imagine it has to do with the fact that he's being the iron dragon. His whole thing seems to be around forge, like forge yeah. smithing and stuff. So maybe he's got like soot or ash all over him. It's it's weird because it's like he he's mid transformation maybe. Maybe and it could be they're trying to like stylistically make him stand out more from um. Miao Ying, so have it mm. where her face is whiter and his is like he's got more dark stuff going on. Oh yeah, it's, yeah, that's another good point, Chad. He's also an alchemist. I, like I wouldn't be surprised if it's like burns or just that he's got like suit and stuff all over him. <clears throat> yeah, I like it. Like uh, it, it's different. Again, not keen on the helmet, but um... <laughs> well, I like the helmet. So if you want to unsubscribe from him and come over here now. <laughs> 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 it's just weird. Like other than that, like come on, like if you scroll down to like the blood, uh, dragon blood, they look freaking cool, right? Like that is regal. It's kind. Of, it was expected of that unit though, because it's like someone had to bring in some sort of dragonborn into the Warhammer series. Yeah. Oh, I'll I'll say uh, I'm pleasantly surprised with Cathay's roster. I I don't mean to keep shitting on them. I really don't. But it's like one of the only comparisons we have to draw right now. I'm really much more excited for Cathay's roster than I am for Kislev's roster. In that, I, I feel like Cathay has captured a much more core ideology, whereas Kislev missed out on all of that Ungol stuff um, in favor of... Um, uh, it, it was weird. It feels like Kislev has a more fantastical roster than Cathay does. Which is super weird, <laughs> considering yeah. that Cathay is way more um, fantastical um, than 
grounded grim dark like Kith- kislev is probably like the most grim dark kingdom of humans we have in fantasy um but um and, and like i like we've talked about before i don't want to get super into it hopefully that's a dlc type thing but um yeah i i mean i really like how Cathay's turning out uh, i think it's gonna take uh, it, it's it's down to between them and Nurgle for me. I think for a first playthrough after seeing their roster, hmm. I, I I'm still I, I still find it a bit tough when it comes to human factions. Uh, maybe that's just me. Uh, but it is I, I, no. <laughs> <laughs> I I can't get into human factions as much. Like don't get me wrong. Uh, like I really like Kislev. I, I like Cafe and so on. But I'm more interested in seeing say Sinesh or Nurgle um, demons are just demons are just cool demons are just super super cool they're edgy and it's uh why would I want to play a human if I am a human in a sense you know what I mean oh no I know I know exactly what you mean I, I think hmm. I think for me just like the the lineup races for Warhammer 3 de- demons to me aren't quite as exciting as some of the other fantasy races um I'm just that, oh yeah I keep forgetting about ogres yeah ogres is gonna be hard to resist that's going to be super hard to resist. But, uh, Professor Poem, when do we get Lubu DLC? You already got the Lubu DLC. It was the Tarix DLC. So yeah. shut up and sit down. <laughs> you already got it. <laughs> I'm still waiting for them to bring in Neferata with uh, Sao Sao's mechanics from Free Kingdoms, because if that doesn't happen, I'm going to, like, complain constantly. <laughs> Nathan, you say that like that's not already what we do. <laughs> Oh no, like really, really complain. Like just we're, we're just professional complainers. <laughs> it's just have you played that um have you played Sao Sao since uh since No, the, uh, I never did. I only I only played the Dong. Oh dude, that DLC is so freaking good. Like the, the mechanic is you, the moment you start it up, you'll think that's Neferata for sure. Like a hundred percent. Yeah. Um I'll check that out at some point. Uh, but yeah, I overall, I, I think the Cathay roster reveal went super well. Um, mm. They definitely, the, there's definitely room to grow with Cathay, um, mm. but it's not nearly as over the top as I thought it had. It definitely had the potential to be. Like they could have come swinging in with like all the magical creatures everywhere, and instead, it's like a very grounded human faction that has like literally. I mean, they only have, like, two mystical units that are not characters. Uh, being the the Great Longma Riders and the uh, Terracotta Sentinel. Everything else is, like, people. <laughs> now that you mention it, one slight complaint. No temple dogs. Ah, I'm, I think that's going to be a DLC thing. Yeah, it's just... You know, like, they were one of the only units from cafe in the tabletop from way back in the day it's like it would have been nice to bring the temple dog in i mean it would have been nice to start scaven with clan scryer but <laughs> you know that was a dlc a damn good one i might add <laughs> well if they would have been uh like base game they would have sucked because i mean look at my boys pestilence man no no fucking great pox rat no <laughs> no no Dude, nothing right? i i Listen, I'm not trying to give anybody hope for this. I'm just, I'm just throwing in a fun anecdote, which is that I, uh, when I was in, uh, one of the times I was in England for Everchosen stuff, I, I've, I was at a pub with, um, uh, Rich, uh, who's like the head of the content team, and I was like, so, when's my, when's my Clan Pestilence DLC? <laughs> like, where, where's my Cauldron of a Thousand Poxes? <laughs> my great box rats and stuff. <laughs> It's just so disappointing that every clan has gotten love, except for the actual one that has caused so much shit throughout the history of the Skaven. Yeah, they've started every civil war. Yeah. Um, it's like, why? <laughs> which, is, which is pretty impressive, to be honest. Mm-hmm. Uh, all right, so um, I think that's pretty good on that. If, if you want to get like our super deep down thoughts um, on all of the Cathay stuff, we both have videos on it. I'm sure we're going to be talking about it a lot more to come in the future. So you can go check out either of our channels to get more information on that. So I don't think we need to beat that to death. Um, um, unless you got any last thoughts on it. But I, I, th- I think we're good to move on. Yeah, I think we're good. 
All right, so uh, next thing up on the uh, docket to talk about, uh, I think Nathan did a video about this. I have not covered it on my channel yet, but uh, the Cubicle 7, who are the creators behind uh, Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay 4th Edition, uh, have made a super exciting announcement, uh, which is that uh, they, they like to put out essentially teasers of content that they are working on to come out in the future, and one of the things they revealed is that they're doing a Dogs of War expansion. And wow. not only is it Dogs of War, but it's my version that I like of the Dogs of War, where it's Araby and the Southern Realms all slapped together into one book. <laughs> the way they've it should actually, be. They've done some new stuff, too, it seems. Yeah, so uh, uh, I know you did a video on it. Uh, what, what, are your, what, are your, what are your thoughts and the things you've checked out on it? So, uh, from what I've seen, and they've added, ooh, okay, they've, they've added some more stuff. Um, it's cool, like the Araby stuff was beautiful. Uh, a lot of people know that I've been a long-time campaigner for, for Araby. I, anytime I'm in the Total War Discord, it's always Believe and the Sun emoji, because that's the, that's the theme. Uh, I like <laughs> it. Praise the Sun! <laughs> Like I, I got told off by uh, by, by someone once because it was just too much, <laughs> but like the the Araby art is is just gorgeous, right? Like that is uh, the yellow, blue, and gold aesthetic with the dark elf head. I want to say on the side. I am trying to find it so I can pull up the image now. They've been they've been spamming their upcoming Salzenmund release. Which I am looking forward to reading. I'll find it. <laughs> Just keep uh, talking about give, stuff. <laughs> give me one sec. Uh, they, they they post a lot, don't they? They they post a lot, but like yeah, because Champions of Death is about to come out, so they've been they've been spamming. There you go. Uh, you should have it. Oh, there it is. There it is. Okay, I see it. So this, yeah, this is the yeah, that's definitely a dark elf head, which makes perfect sense. Mm. so it is great like this is a um we we more or less had a araby design for the horse riders when we had obviously um al mukta and his desert dogs but it wasn't very um fleshed out plus i i believe they used to they used to dress in white didn't they the desert dogs uh i i don't know <laughs> what they're making a card game oh no Oh yeah! yeah. Oh a no! <laughs> oh no! This is bad news! Oh god! My wallet! Oh god! <laughs> it's uh, it's a lot of stuff coming what? out. Like, <laughs> They're yeah. releasing what? <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is bad. <laughs> this is really bad. <laughs> and they've got a map of the empire that you can purchase too. Which oh god, that's a very small image. Uh, yes, I, I think this is just a map of, um, this is a map of, oh no, this is the entire Empire, you're right. I, I own the physical map of Reichland they released, which is fantastic. Well, I guess I'm going to be mm. buying this too. Um, god, they've been doing so much good shit lately. Yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, I, I am very, very excited to see them touch on, um, the, the Dogs of War and Arabi. Because let's, let's be honest, like... Nobody that's official is willing to admit it, but you and I both know that this is very, this very easily could be indicating things going on internally within Games Workshop as far as Warhammer the Old World and as far as what Total War Warhammer may be allowed to, or even be pressured by Games Workshop to do and release. Yeah, and we both know, and like it should not be a secret to our communities that me and Nathan would literally sell our souls to have the Southern Realms with mm -hmm. or the Dogs of War. I, I I gotta start calling them the Dogs of War because I think that would be the best name. But uh, having the Dogs of War as a playable race would be mm -hmm. just amazing. Well, the thing is, like uh, we we we've been seeing a lot of this because obviously uh, anything that C Cubicle Seven ha uh, does has to be go has to go through Games Workshop, right? Like. They write new law and it needs to be approved, even if it's a separate universal timeline or whatever the hell people want to call it. It still needs to be approved by the powers that be. Then, obviously, this week we had some really tasty news regarding the border princes, didn't we? So, 
Yeah, uh, but before we go into that, uh, which we should go into that, uh, real quick, I do also want to make a note because this is something that I've said on a prior Lorebeards podcast and I've been meaning to correct myself and I keep forgetting, but I remember now, which is that um, I actually wanted to correct something I said, which is that I stated in a prior uh, podcast that one of the things I did not like about Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay 4th Edition was that it was based on different lore. Um, that it was based on, like, um, first edition Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay instead of um, 8th edition, which is, or 8th edition Tabletop, which is uh, what Total War is based on, my preference, personally. Um, and I actually wanted to issue a correction, because it turns out that they did that on purpose. The Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay 4th edition starts with the older lore. So it starts with um, characters that are from the first edition roleplay. It starts with uh, the provinces being slightly different. It starts with there being a lot of strange mysteries about Karl Franz, about there being a different Grand Theogenist instead of Volkmar the Grim, and a bunch of other stuff like that. Well, it turns out, if you've been playing the fourth edition uh, campaign series, which is the Empire and Ruin, which they've been showing off because uh, they're actually coming to the end of the Empire and Ruin series because now they're selling it as... Uh, or the Empire and Ruin is the final volume of The Enemy Within. The Enemy Within is basically the the, the entire storyline. Um, and uh, turns out, if you've been following the storyline by playing through it as the books have come out, which I have not because I thought it wasn't something I'd be interested in. Turns out I'm stupid and I'm wrong is that the entire point of The Enemy Within, which is a five-part series of RPGs that are all connected, so it's like a giant sweeping storyline you're, you're able to play through with your friends, the entire thing, if you play through it, gets you from the first edition Warhammer Fantasy RPG to 8th edition. So by the end of the storyline you end up with the Grand Theogenist being killed and he's replaced by, and his, the person that's uh, elected to take his place who plays a major part, I think in book five, is Volkmar the Grim. And turns out that uh, Karl Franz is, uh, I think it's that he's been poisoned um, by, uh, there's a cult of Zinch that's very heavily trying to uh, kill, assassinate Karl Franz and do all this stuff. So it turns out Karl Franz is a badass hero He's just been poisoned and he's been sick. And because he's been sick, his attendants have been hiding him away from the public. And that's why all these weird rumors have been starting. And it's up to the party to not only discover this plot, but to save the emperor. And there's all this stuff going on with like Galmaraz and there's a big uh, greater demon involved. And it like all the provinces are shifting. So they're in, right in. If you start with the role play, it starts with like Nordland not being a province. Because originally, the province is, um, uh, the province is, um, it's Minland, Minheim, and Ripeland. But by the very end of the series, um, Nordland ends up becoming its own province, uh, in exchange for, uh, because, because there's, something happens that leads to that. And we end up with the Elector Counts that we know and love. So, like, Marius Leekdorf takes over Averheim, and Theodric Gosser takes over Nordland, and all that stuff. So, it ends up in 8th edition. So, mm. for anyone like me that's been kind of, like, looking down your nose at it, or avoiding buying them, or checking it out, um, because it, you're like, oh, this is based on super-duper old stuff, that's totally not correct. Uh, and you should start checking it out. That was good. Sounds Sorry, that good. was really long-winded. <laughs> no, no, no. You need to uh, you need to make sure that people are aware that yeah, sometimes we can be wrong and stuff like that, and we weren't really aware of this too much. To be honest, I didn't play much Warhammer Fantasy roleplay, though I live in a population of thirty thousand, so it's like very hard to find people who are interested in. Yeah, get, gotta get gotta get an online group. <laughs> yeah, you gotta find an online group. <laughs> Um, all right, so uh, do you want to talk uh, real quick about the border print stuff from Games Workshop? Yep, uh, let me just find... Yeah, here we go, the article. Okay, so this is really important, guys, because um, a Warhammer the Old World article came out this week, um, which is 
something that a lot of us weren't expecting. In all honesty, I was expecting more cafe and stuff, weren't you? And uh, then... uh, yes, I was. I was expecting cafe news. And then we got an update to the one of the most beautiful maps I've ever seen in my Dude, life. Dude, I can't wait for them to release a physical copy of this map. I'm gonna buy oh, the God shit damn. out of it. Yeah, like damn. So. Why is this exciting? Well, they've already decided to start fleshing out the law of the Border Princes, which is something that we expected, but not just yet. Mainly because the Border Princes, uh, if you're not too used to Warhammer Fantasy lore, but you're used to more like Warhammer 40k, the Border Princes existed purely to allow you to give fluff to an army that wasn't part of something else. So, um, very much like 40k has the two missing legions, this is an area where you can make an Imperial army, but they're not part of the Empire. A Bretonian army, which doesn't follow the Lady, maybe. A uh, Kislevite army, which, you know, is far away from home. This is the outer outlaw area, right? It's, it's, it's a place of fuckery, in essentially. Oh yeah, well, it's the place where people go that have been um, disgraced or banished or they're, like, criminals and murderers, and so, like, they're they they have enough money to set up somewhere else and cause all sorts of problems. And we have a lot of really cool shit here. Obviously, the thing that struck out to me more was it looks like they're moving the blood keep. So I don't I don't know what the thing going on there with Harkin is, uh, which is I, I assume what you're referencing. Like I'm wondering if that's one of their brothers as opposed to being Wallach. I mean, it could be Wallach, but I think by this. point, Point in the timeline, I think Wallach is supposed to be at. I can't remember when he gets pushed out of Bloodkeep the first time. Uh, I think he might. I think this might be where he retreats to after he gets pushed out of Bloodkeep at the end of the Vampire Wars. Because they. Wallach gets pushed out of Bloodkeep twice. The first time is af during or after the Vampire Wars. And I think the second time is um during the reign of Karl Franz. So because Karl Franz uh fights uh fights them um and nearly gets killed but Orion saves his ass. So I'm I'm thinking that um uh I I'm thinking that this that maybe is Walla Karkin, but maybe where he retreated to uh after they were defeated at Blood Keep. It's it's a weird thing because uh it just it threw it threw everyone off, and I'll be honest, it threw me off too because it's like, well, this is a uh, th this is something very strange because obviously now they're showing a lot more with the world map. Well, what little yeah, bit dude, of the world the, map that we have. Look how detailed the forest of gloom is. Like, yeah, <laughs> like I'm used to that just being like a giant blob. Yeah, that is incredible. The 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 thing that strikes me here, right? So obviously, uh, one thing that people need to know is that is likely a G, not a B. So Baston has not been moved; it's just Gaston. So I, no I, I don't know. one. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah, because a lot of people got worried thinking that was a B. Yeah. No. Uh, no. Yeah. I don't think it, nothing. No physical place nor faction has been moved. Um, that we're aware of, looking at this map. And plus, it, it's of course worth noting that this is 200 years before the, the world we're used to. So yeah. there may be notable things shifted around. But like, ah, it's so cool. Like, they even included the random Tomb King guy from Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay 1st Edition, I think? Uh, Karataman's Tomb, which is to the right. It's south of the Tower of Shadows in the World's Edge Mountains. It's to the right of the Pontien faction. Mm -hmm. Um, that's, that's a, that's a, that's a supplement they released for, um, which is hilarious. Like it, like it's, it's a super old supplement. Like it's so old that if you try and read it now, it, it, like, you're like, that's a really weird, like that doesn't make any sense for a Tomb King because it's like that level of old. Um, yeah. I think the Tomb King is referred to as like a white <laughs> back then. Um, Cause I think I don't even know if like the Tomb Kings were a standalone faction or if that was more during their undead days, but uh, that's a really cool reference. Um, but of course we've got like the Tomb King symbol in the bottom of the Dragonback Mountains. Um, there's tons of uh, uh, there's the Beast Stones, so we've got actual herd stones for the Beastmen being shown on the map, which is really exciting. Um, it it's just looking super like I cannot wait for this map to be finished. 
Uh, I cannot There's wait. Two heads for the future. Yeah. So if if we look to um, if we look to the bottom uh, the, the bottom left, we have an Astallion and Talian name, which has its own style of heraldry. Because as you can see, most of the heraldry, when you link it up to everything else, has a very similar style. So like the Kislev one at the bottom looks like the Kislev ones at the top in terms of shape. The Bretonian ones have the same one in terms of shape. The Imperial one has yeah, the, the shield, same yeah, one the, the shield, the shields for the heraldry. Every depending on your race, you get a different style. Yeah. So we have two <clears> different <throat> shield shapes here. One is clearly a stallion, and the other one is clearly a uh, Talian. So this might mean that we will have because uh, I'm not expecting Dogs of War to be a playable sub faction. Uh, sorry, their own faction. I'm expecting them to be a sub faction, a supplement, very much like the Vampire Coast. Where you kit bash and you make up your own army. I don't know, man. Like with with Kislev being fully playable, um, and like Cathay coming out and stuff. I I don't know if I can be shocked anymore if they were to come. Like Estalia and Talea are big enough; they could be their own books. Yeah. Like the I border would, princes, I don't think so. No, the uh, and I think they tried to make that clear in the article that yeah. the border princes is not a playable race. It's it's it is a it is a place that you could basically it's it's a sandbox that they yeah. literally said in the article it's always been intended to be a sandbox that's why literally every single human race and vampires <laughs> are sitting here slapping each other around mm. all right but, but yeah we, super we exciting news. See, we, we will definitely see a playable estalia and Talia as maybe their own factions which would be cool though this is the thing if we go back to the big map right um how it works in law, because obviously we know where like most of the stuff is. Like for example, Talia is right next to the Border Princes, Estalia is right next to that. Uh obviously in the middle we have uh Skaven Blight. God, I completely forgot Skaven Blight. Though on the side, you know, like in the Warhammer 2 map where Tobaro is. Uh yeah. Tob Tobaro is supposed to be Estalia, no, uh, Tabaro is supposed to be Talian, unless that gets drastically changed, or else Estalia is going to be a small-ass country. Uh, we'll just have to wait and see. Um, mm. Tabaro has always been kind of a weird place, because, I mean, it gets, like, blown up multiple times. <laughs> so we're, we'll just, it's kind of like the Uber Shrike of Estalia, <laughs> where it's just getting constantly stomped. I have noticed, though, that they have made Estalia bigger. Well, it's it's probably like the, I would not at all be surprised to see them having gone back and uh, readdressed some of the sizes of the nations because it looks like they're trying to be really nitty uh, nitty gritty about it, and a lot of the prior maps like are not nitty gritty. <laughs> they're very like just focused on a particular thing, and then everything else around it isn't too worried about. Like if you really look at this map, like Norska is a much more appropriate size than it tends to be on most maps. Um, Norska tends to look a lot larger um, on many maps, and I think that's due to, like, when they do, like, a global display, Norska almost seems to get, like, stretched out a little bit. Um, yeah. But, um, yeah, it's all looking really exciting. I hope I hope we get vampire counts soon, because having that big blank space in the middle of the map bothers me. <laughs> I'm, ready, oh, I'm ready for them to fill that in. There is a lot of weird blank spaces. I mean, if we look at it, uh, they've obviously made Norska bigger, though, because we know we're getting Norse dwarfs. I mean, if we if we zoom in and see one of the original I images, it actually says Norse dwarfs. Yeah, I, I would area. say it's more filled in, but I actually think the act like the full landmass in comparison to the Empire is smaller than it used to be. Mm. But um, but you know, we'll keep an eye on that. Well, I'm expecting. We'll, we'll you know, we'll probably be expecting more news on that probably in three to six months. Oh, definitely, definitely. Like, they're kind of slow with those updates, which uh, I get it. They're trying to tease, but, like, some people are saying, it's like, oh, why didn't they fill in this in? It's, it's like, yeah, because they're trying to be slow. Yeah, let 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 anyone who's complaining about uh, um, the reveal schedule for Total War Warhammer 3 go sit down in the Warhammer the Old World section. Yeah. <laughs> you, you will see misery, the likes of which you have never experienced. Like you, you guys get an update every now and then. Like every so, so far, what? Like every Tuesday, we've been having something more or less. Like that's cool and that's amazing. And people have been complaining because, yeah, I understand that you want gameplay and stuff like that. We Warhammer the Old World fans, it's been two years since the announcement. It'll and... get here when it gets here, okay? <laughs> yeah, that's literally what happens. Like GW are so quiet about things. It's not just that. It's like, it's like, come on, throw us a bone. 
like yeah, someone's just said it. It's like drip feed agony. It's like ours is worse. The tabletop guys, we have it worse. Believe yeah. me, this has been three months in the waiting. We've had what three articles in a very short amount of time, and then they're gonna go radio silent again. Yeah, well, it's like well, the complaint about Cathay hasn't even been that oh they're not saying anything. It's that oh they're not saying what I want to hear. Mm-hmm. <laughs> in the three weeks we've been talking about it, it's like shut up <laughs> just just sit down and be quiet but anyway anyway before i get us into trouble let's move on <laughs> so um actually for once the last thing well not the last thing we're doing today but the last uh full segment is our who would win can't forget our who would win so uh for today uh, i actually had this recommended in both the who would win arena uh and on twitter and i think also live and there are an, uh, at least a couple of people who seem to really want this fight so we're gonna do it which we've got Carl Franz, the Emperor of the Empire, of Sigmar's Empire, and Prince of Altdorf, versus Altharian the Grim, the hero of Yivris, and uh, he who defeated Grom the Paunch. So, um, real quick, to just kind of give a good... Um, Feel slash lineup for the uh, the matchup here. We'll start with old Franzi. So Carl Franz, who has appeared uh, in Who Would Wins back in the day uh, for my channel, but obviously uh, that would only be if you've uh, watched those specific things. So Carl Franz comes into the battle uh, with a couple of fancy little pieces of gear. The big thing that he has uh, offering him defensiveness is that he has the Silver Seal, which the Silver Seal is uh, not only a symbol uh, to help represent uh, the Princes of uh, Reichland, or Altdorf and the Electric Count of Reichland, but offers him a ton of protection. Uh, The Silver Seal is extremely resistant to magic and protects its bearer from uh, almost all forms of magic. It's, It's very, very solid. In addition to that, it also provides them with, uh, you know, kind of that traditional barrier. Oh, I forgot to turn my alerts off. (laughs) Um, Turns off the, uh, it uh, provides a barrier, just like you would expect from uh, many ward save items. So kind of wards off danger and uh, protects from many sources of threat. Then, of course, he wields Galmaraz. The big boy, the big hammer, the 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 hunka hunka whole mighty of melee weapons, but he is only just a man. Uh, so while he does wield it with efficient skill and power, um, you know he's not like Carl Franz is a skilled combatant, but he's by no means like the biggest baddest boss. Uh, when it comes to um melee engagements so he kind of relies on galmaraz to pick up the slack there a little bit and he comes into battle uh he has full plate armor uh which is nice to have it's not a magical set of armor uh but it is made of gromerel which does make it uh pretty damn tanky and he'll be coming into battle on death claw his uh special named mount and the one that he almost always comes into battle on which uh death claw is a large imperial griffin and he uh, is pretty skilled in combat after a, a lifetime of fighting alongside Carl Franz um well not a full griffin lifetime but Carl Franz's lifetime uh cuz Carl Franz actually raised him from a bob a babe and uh yeah that's kind of what he's bringing to the table meanwhile on the opposite in the opposite corner uh we've got Eltharian the Grim which Altharian the Grim is also a Griffin Rider. He comes in on Stormwing. And Stormwing versus uh, Deathclaw is kind of the traditional matchup of the Imperial Griffin versus the Elven Griffin, which is that Stormwing is much faster and more agile than Deathclaw is, but Deathclaw is much bigger uh, and hits harder. So you've got to got that to keep in mind. And then in Thar- Altharian the Grim comes in as a very skilled elven prince uh he is a very very skilled hand-to-hand combatant um he of course is an elf so he is more fragile than uh most opponents that show up in the who would win series 
Uh, to help protect him, he does have the Helm of Yivris, which the Helm of Yivris, uh, as a sign of his station, uh, as one of the lar uh, the major princes of that um, the kingdom within Ulthuan, it not only helps provide him with more armor, which he wears heavy armor in addition to his helmet, but it also provides a barrier that helps protect him and Stormwing, his uh, griffin, from all forms of damage. So it makes it helps provide warding to kind of throw off people's attacks or turn aside uh, arrows and missile fire um, poten uh, potentially at the last second. He then has the Talisman of Hoeth, which not only uh, provides him with some magic resistance, so it protects him from enemy spells, though only a little bit. It kind of just makes it easier for him to dispel them. But it also provides him with the ability to cast magic. Um, Altharian the Grim uh, is actually able to cast and uh, technically, Total War Warhammer lies to us. Uh, Eltharian the Grim does not have the ability in the lore to cast on the lore of high magic. He's actually only able to use lores from the battle magics. But they did that as a good compromise, I think, to make him stand out from Teclas. Because Teclas is supposed to be the Great Wizard. And he has like a spell from different lores. Whereas Eltharian is, is supposed to do the same gimmick. Uh, well, Eltharian is supposed to pick one battle lore. But I think to try and make him stand out and be kind of interesting, they gave him the lore of high magic. It's kind of a gimme. Um, so for this battle, why don't we go ahead and follow suit? Um, and we'll toss him the lore of high magic. Uh, though he's not a very skilled wizard. Altharian, Altharian's a decent wizard. But he's by no means great. Um, and then last, he's got the Fang Sword. Which the Fang Sword um, not only uh, makes... Uh, Eltharian hit substantially harder. It is a very, very powerful enchanted blade, but it also slices through all forms of non-magical armor as if they're not even there. Because So Eltharian can slice through armor with ease, and his weapon allows him to hit um, harder even than Stormwing. So though that's the matchup. What uh, I'm going to go ahead and get the poll started, but what are your, what are your starting thoughts, Nathan? It is tough. Um, the problem is that Elfarian isn't really a character that, uh, that I'd rate much, especially against someone as beefy as uh, Carl Franz, because what a lot of people think is Carl's like a standard human, but he's actually really big for a human. Like, d dude's hench, right? Oh, um, yeah, he's strong. Maybe... He's, he, he's, got a, he's got some good muscles to him. He's got a big swing. Yeah, and people seem to, like, in law, especially earlier law, they likened him to having, like, no skin blood because the guy is is actually fairly large when compared to a standard human. So the guy knows how to pack a punch. Um, obviously, the griffin, when it comes to Battle of Griffins, probably Stormwing would beat Deathclaw, but it really depends. I don't know, I don't know. It, it's a very tough one. Yeah, so um, it's something something specific I, I, I think is worth pointing out uh, that didn't occur to me until kind of looking at their profiles here is that it is worth noting that the Helm of Yivris protects both Eltharian and Stormwing, though it is not as powerful of a ward as the Silver Seal, but the Silver Seal only protects Franz. So um, Stormwing does have th that kind of magical barrier to help to protect him while as Deathclaw does not. So that is worth noting if you're thinking about kind of the Griffin versus Griffin part of the matchup. I don't know. I don't know. It's, uh... It is tough. It is tough. Because... Hmm. And it, it, it is an interesting series of trade-offs. Like, Altharian the Grim has a longbow. I don't know if... It, I don't think it'd really help him much. Like, maybe he could... Maybe if he got lucky... He is a very, very skilled archer. Maybe he could land a good shot on Deathclaw. But, uh... I doubt it, to be honest, with them flying around each other. But, uh... Yeah. Like, Altharian is a much more skilled combatant than Karl Franz. Uh, like, he, he has much more skill when it comes to parrying and landing blows. But, Karl Franz has Galmaraz. So he only needs to land one hit on Altharian to just absolutely wreck his shit. <laughs> like, if Karl Franz lands a blow with Galmaraz, um, Altharian's, he's he's dead. He's super dead. Um, mm. But Altharian, it, it, it comes, I think it kind of comes down to, do, would you think that Altharian's um, superior speed and skill uh, would be enough to trump Franz's kind of 
uh, pure death blow using Gal Morass. Because that 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 is Carl Franz's win scenario. I think, uh, to be completely frank, is Gal Morass. Um, if he can land a hit with Gal Morass against Stormwing or Eltharian, it's pretty much game over. Um, like that would instantly cripple whoever it hit. Whereas Deathclaw, Deathclaw's a big boy. Uh, and he could take a good number of uh, hits from both Stormwing and Altharian before he's severely injured. Um, and uh, if Stormwing got into a big tussle with De Deathclaw, Deathclaw would have an excellent... Stormwing would have trouble if they got into a big fight. Stormwing would definitely need to be trying to keep uh, Deathclaw at a kind of an arm's reach uh, to prevent Deathclaw from just completely overpowering him. Mm. But yeah, I don't know, I don't know. it's tricky. I might have to go with uh, Franz, to be honest. Like, out of the two, I'd say um, while Elves had this natural thing about, like, obviously being able to uh, be more agile and so on, it just feels like it would be constant fighting until both Griffins would wear out at the very least. And if it's down to foot, just one slap with a hammer. One slap. Yeah, that's true. Um, I think I think for me, uh, I think I'm gonna stick with what I've been doing, which I think makes things fun. I'm gonna go the contrarian opinion. Opinion. I'm gonna go with Eltharian. Um, though my reasoning for it, uh, to explain for anyone curious, will be that I think Eltharian Eltharian's magic is nowhere near good enough to touch Franz or Deathclaw. It's just not gonna happen. He's not gonna be able to use that magic to um to hurt or kill Franz. But what he can do with his magic is buff himself. Uh, he can mm -hmm. use the magic to increase his own powers uh, and to make himself an even deadlier combatant. And the Fang Sword would be more than capable of slicing through Franz's armor like it's not even there. So the only thing Franz would have defending him, uh, defending himself from attacks, would be his natural skill in combat uh, and the silver, the silver seal, which is not to be underestimated. But I think because Eltharian is so much more skilled and is so much faster than Franz, I think he would actually have a reasonable opportunity of pulling what he did against Blacktooth, the the Greenskin Shaman, where he like Stormwing is notably faster than Deathclaw and would have a command of how they engage because he is much he's faster. He's just he's smaller, but he's quicker. And I think he would be able to go in for that uh, lancing stab or a decapitation strike. And if he could land one good hit on Franz uh, by chopping his head off or impaling him through the chest or something, Franz is tough, but he's still just a man. Uh, oh. You know, we kind of saw that in his fight with Wallach Harkin. Granted, he was not wielding Gal Mraz when he fought Wallach Harkin. Uh, but um, if, if he gets stabbed, he, he has a bad time. Mm. Um, well, it, it depends too, because like obviously Garmaraz is a contributing factor because we know that it makes the uh, the wielder stronger, uh, faster, and stuff like that. Someone here is like, "Oh, hammers are not a fast weapon." It's like you don't tend to have to be. Take in, keep in mind that Garmaraz took out Nagash once. Yeah, like, yeah Garmaraz. The Garmaraz thing is that for how damn big it is, um, like it's a pretty hefty hammer because it's it looks. Like, you can wield it in one hand, but it's definitely preferred to wield it with two, which is why anyone who's ever wielded Galmaraz never takes a shield. It's because they're, uh, with the exception, I think Vaulted did. No, maybe he didn't. I don't remember if Vaulted did or not. But uh, oh. generally, they tend to wield it with two hands, because it's a big old hammer. And, um, it, like, it's able to be wielded very, very quickly, despite its speed. Uh, but it would be nowhere near as fast as Altharian would be wielding... Um, Fang sword like that wouldn't even be a contest, but um, uh, it, but I, I I do think it would come down to a joust type scenario. I think it would literally be like a terrifying flying joust where you'd have Fang sword licking out at Franz trying to kill him, and Galmraz swinging at either Stormwing or Eltharian to because if like I think it would just come down to whoever managed to if Eltharian could land at least a series of good blows or one good lance with the Fang Sword to kill Franz, I think he wins immediately. Because if it's just Deathclaw, Deathclaw is not going to win. Um, but if Franz lands a single hit against anything with Galmaraz, he wins. So it's, 
it's it's, it's both. I, I I I but I I think you can I think it's more than fair to go for either side. It is a it is a mm. damn close matchup. It is very very weird. Uh, my chat uh, with the poll ended up actually fifty three percent in favor of Althara and the Grim. So very very close, very close. Uh, mine is. It's oh wow, it's fifty fifty. All right, well then we know it was a good matchup. Mm -hmm. So, uh, man, I, and I hope we get more art from Rodrigo about that. Rod, Rod it's not Rodrigo. It's Rod. Never mind. I'm gonna stop before I hurt myself. <laughs> he knows. We love you, our our, uh, our our wonderful fan artist. Let me check. Yeah, because he's uh, watching stuff. Yeah, it's Rodrigo. Rod oh no, I okay, it is just Rodrigo. Okay, for some reason my brain was like, no, no, it's not that, it's something slightly different. No, it is Rodrigo. Good. I should have trusted myself. Yeah, I've been I've been adoring his fan art. Anyone in chat that has not gone on Twitter and checked out Rodrigo Pereira's um art, he make he's literally done art every single week of Lorebeards. Showing the the who would win matchups, and they are hysterical. Mm -hmm. Um So uh... we we love that. Before we go, uh, it turns out that GW have just posted their Sunday preview. Do you want to quickly go over that? Uh, is there anything interesting? <laughs> uh, we've got the Harrow Deep box with all the fixings, and it actually looks like a really nice box, actually. So that's quite good. Oh, um, oh, the new, uh, the, yeah, the Harrow Deep box is coming out too. Ooh, I might yeah. get that. Yeah. Let's put on the display. So, uh, guys, if you're not aware, every Sunday GW posts a lot of stuff of what's coming the following week. Um, and there's a few things coming this week, it seems. So we've got a new edition, well, a new season, isn't it, of yes. Warhammer Underworld? Yeah, it's a new season of Warhammer Underworlds. So it's a new starter set. So if you've never played the game before and you're, like, thinking of getting into it, which it's a damn fun game, um, this, this is what you would almost assuredly want to buy if you've never played before. If you have played before, um, they will usually release like a side expansion you can get instead. So we've got, uh, there's a unit of Stormcast which are following the old style Stormcast? Uh, no, these are the new, these are the new style. Um, oh, right. Yeah, they're the new style. You can tell because of the bow and that they're a lot skinnier. Um, oh yeah, they've got different animals on the... Um... Yeah, they have a, they have a ether wing. Uh, I think I'm pretty sure that's an ether wing. They've got uh one of the new archers. They got a big hammer boy, and they've got the warden with the lantern and sword. Which the warden actually turned out really good looking. That's uh, pretty cool. Like normally, I'm not a huge fan of Stormcast by any means, but I do like this Underworld Warband. They do look pretty good, to be honest. Uh, the, the the thing most people are going to be excited about is the. Uh, cruel boys because there's a new hobgoblin there. Well, hobgrot. Uh, nice. yes. So, uh, the cruel boys who come with two goblins, two oryx, and a hobgrot or a, a, uh, Age of Sigmar hobgoblin. Uh, which the hobgoblin is literally ripped straight from the sneaky stabbers of the old hobgoblin minis. He's even got the hat yeah. or the cowl, um, which is pretty fantastic. Uh, and man, those are some nasty looking weapons on all these guys. Like, they've, they've got some scary ass looking weapons. They're man they've catcher. Got a, a Skaven thing catcher, isn't it? Yeah, the, I think it's just a man catcher for them. But mm. uh, yeah, they got a man catcher and they've got like a, a ball and chain guy just waiting to snap it onto somebody and a barbed whip on the dude with the head cage. That guy's giving me yeah. hardcore Bloodborne vibes. The, the warband leader with the head cage. <laughs> that uh, spear prodder thing is... Yeah, no thank you. <laughs> no thank you. Not want to get shanked by that. Uh, then we've got uh, Warhammer 40k DLC <laughs> with the Octarius sy uh, system. Oh god. Oh, it's Tyranid stuff. Just give us the bloody codex. Yeah, there's been a, there's been a lot of interesting comments about the, the war zones. But this is part one, which is about Tyranids and Orcs and stuff. And they've got Tyranids all over the art. Uh, it's got new dice for the Ordo oh, Xenos. I, I thought the fucking Octarius thing was... 
That's the main setting for fucking Kill Team. Why are they taking Nids in there too? Cause, well, because like the whole big thing with Octarius is uh, is that it's like where that idiot who is like the equipment uh, got like the two yeah. Nids and the Orcs to fight each other endlessly, and apparently it's like about to spill out or something. Jeez. Uh, but yes, uh, that is also where Kill Team is taking place. Because I guess I guess Octarius is just so hot right now. I guess. I mean, it's it's fine, and it looks like there's going to be crusade missions for the Tyranids. Which again, awesome, but um, it's it's just give us the codexes. A lot of us are suffering at the moment. My Tau specifically are suffering really bad. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh Ordo Zeno dice, Ooh. nice. And then we got a we got new Sons of Horus stuff for Forge World. These are fucking cool. Lots of new books. Oh, they're releasing new grass. Uh, which may sound stupid if you're not someone that uh, <laughs> is into uh, making, or if you're not into model work, but uh, that's nice looking grass. <laughs> yeah, look, they acknowledge that the, the Mordian stuff. That's cool. That's and, good. Then there is a Sisters of Battle Marvel comic issue two coming out. Looks oh, like they're fighting nice. Tyranids. I am so fed up of, uh, like, I, I get it that they're trying to uh, push themselves everywhere, but, like, release your main stuff before you start doing your side stuff. Yep. All right. Um, That's going to be look. pretty much everything. They've um, got a battle report for Warhammer Plus. Beast Core Raiders versus Stormcast Eternals. That's cool. Great. So for yeah. people who want to check that out, feel free to check that out. All right, yeah. that's going to be it um, for Lorebeards, except we have one, we have, we have a, we have a, uh, one last thing. Yeah. So all we're going to say, all we're going to say mm -hmm. is that you will really want to be checking out me and Nathan's YouTube channels or wherever you listen to the pod. If you listen to the podcast, it'll also be in the regular podcast space. tomorrow. At 8 a.m. CST, two, what is that, 2 p.m. BST? Uh, right? Let me check. <laughs> Pretty, yeah, no, that's right, that's right. So 8 a.m. Central Standard Time, 2 p.m. British Standard Time, either Nathan's channel, Great Book of Grudges, or my channel, Loremaster of Sotek, you will want to be there. That's all yeah. we can say. Yeah, it's, it's it's something that uh, is very exciting for both myself and Ryan. Uh, like, we we were definitely, like, really hyped up to record this. Yeah, so uh, we hope we'll see you all there. Uh, and that's, that's all we can say. So uh, thank you all so much for watching. Uh, and uh, um, and uh, that's it. Any closing thoughts or uh, anything from you? Uh, not too much. Uh, just a quick note, obviously, guys. Uh, remember that we'll be starting battle reports in exactly, I want to say, four weeks, because that will be the first week of November. So, uh, the the stuff has been shown off for, um, like, I've already prepared the army. Uh, a lot of the stuff I'm painting at the moment for Taylor 2 Gamers is going to be part of that battle report army, too, because, uh, I figured, why not with the first army I've painted in a long time? So that's going to be really, really fun. Um, and other than that, there's some really, really cool stuff. I've got something, a little bit of a surprise in terms of battle reports. Hopefully going to happen in November too. So you guys are going to be really excited about that. I'll tell you after we've uh, we've gone offline. And yeah, just have a great weekend. Guys. Well, what's left of it. And I, I, I need a, like... I, I need to have something because I had a nasty electrical shock right before we started this and I'm kind yeah, of dying. Go, go <laughs> cover that up or remove it or <laughs> and then and then don't <laughs> go buy a new webcam. Alright. We'll see you guys later. Um I I don't have anything. Um uh, so uh we'll see you guys later. Thanks so much for watching. Bye bye. <laughs>